So why would you spend a bit more money on a MultiPlus versus buying two separate components? Hi folks, I'm Roger from OffGrid and in this episode I'm going to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of the MultiPlus versus separate components that basically perform the same task or the basics of that task anyway. So let's let's talk about the uh, right from the start we'll talk about the price so that uh, as we're talking about everything else you can bear in mind the price. So th this is a two kilowatt 12 volt multiplus and its price is 1018 so just over a thousand pounds. So uh, this is a 12 volt inverter, Victron inverter and a separate 25 amp charger, mains charger, and the combined price of these two is 943. So this one here is 748 and this is 185. You do get a smaller mains charger, a 15 amp mains charger, Victron charger, and that is at about 130 pounds in British money. So, so about 50-ish pounds less than the 25 amp. You're not exactly comparing apples with apples because this one can charge at 80 amps, whereas this one can only charge at 25 amps. They both, the inverters in both of these uh, can output two kilowatts, um, but this one has some tricks up its sleeve that I'll exp be explaining shortly. So again, why spend a bit more money? It's not a huge amount more money. Why spend a bit more money uh, on a multiplus when you could do the same with these separate components. And I am aware that there are much cheaper inverters out there. So for example, a Guy and Dell, two kilowatts is under 300 pounds. And uh, there are a lot of different inverters that are, are much uh, cheaper than Victron. And there are a lot of uh, mains chargers that are also a lot cheaper than, than Victron. But uh, anybody that's bought Victron kit buys Victron kit because uh, it just is so reliable, so good, works so incredibly well. And when you get the whole Victron ecosystem, uh, then it's something that you actually want to stick with generally. So we're not talking, in this episode, we're not talking about other charges and comparing with other charges. I just want to help you uh, understand what the differences are between having a separate charger and inverter uh, versus the combined unit in the multiplus. And I'll be talking a bit about some of the nice features of the multiplus. So the separate units, uh, one of the disadvantages is that you have to mount two separate units, so you've got to find the space for it. And uh, as you can see, they're fairly bulky, uh, partly because of the incredible quality that they are, but they are quite bulky and heavy, and you would need to find a separate place to mount this charger or the smaller charger and uh, your, your uh, inverter. The other advantage of, well, one of the advantages of this, other than pure cost, is that if one of these was to go down, uh, it, it means that the other one is still fine. So if, if this charger, for example, goes down, you probably have other ways of charging your battery solar or DC-DC or something like that. So that's one of the things that a lot of people actually talk about is the fact that they don't like all the eggs in one basket. They don't like combined units because if something goes down, then the whole thing goes down. Whereas with the separate components, that's not the case. But you would need to, as I said, find place to mount these and it just makes the installation that much longer. I can tell you that uh, it's probably going to take uh, as much time to, to you know, mount this with everything as uh, all of these two separate components and maybe this would actually take longer to mount everything. So if you're paying somebody to mount it, uh, that may eat up the difference in cost. So just bear that in mind. But let's talk about what this can do for you and then we'll talk about what the multiplus can do for you. So this is uh, basically an inverter. It, it takes your 12 volt, in this case 12 volts, and inverts it and produces to 30 volts. So this is uh, one that we're selling in the UK. You get uh, very similar inverters in the States for 110. So it produces pure sine wave, so it's, it's purer than your grid power, uh, very reliable. Uh, it's standby and 
in our experience, the standby is usually about one amp uh, and sometimes less uh, to, to just be on standby, which is pretty efficient. A lot of the cheaper inverters will have a standby of about one and a half to two amps. And that's it just sitting there doing nothing, just waiting to see if it's needed. So very efficient in terms of standby. And there are other ones that are efficient as well, but this is, is quite good, very efficient in terms of the standby. So that's the inverter. The charger is, is a very good, robust. You can connect to it with Bluetooth and uh, configure some things and set some things and monitor how it's actually doing. Uh, so it uh, charges 25 amps. Uh, which is fine if you are uh, connected to shore power for an extended time. Uh, it may just take longer to charge up your battery bank, but that's fine. So at, at 25 amps for 12 volts, you're going to be drawing less than 2 amps from your shore power. So uh, that's because obviously uh, 12 volt versus 230 volt. So 230 volts running at 2 amps gives you your 12 volts going in roughly um, you know, at, at 12 volts. So uh, this draws very little off your shore power to provide the 25 amps and almost all electrical installations will will support that. So whether you're at a, a camping site or whatever, that should be absolutely fine in almost all cases, that should be fine. Uh, they both uh, can operate with Bluetooth, so you can connect to them with the Victron Connect app. Out the box, uh, you can talk to them and configure them and uh, check to see what they're up to, what they're doing. And so that's quite a nice feature of these, these two separate items. It says, stay on the subject of the Bluetooth. Uh, the MultiPlus, you, out of the box, you cannot connect to it with Bluetooth. There are different ways that you can actually talk to this device. You can buy a Bluetooth dongle to connect to this via your mobile device, but that's gonna cost a bit of extra money and can connect it to a Serbo GX. And so if you have something like a Serbo GX in your landscape, that would be even better. That's absolutely great if you've got something like that. You can buy the, the little dongle that you can connect to this through USB on your computer. So basically it goes from a network uh, port down at the bottom through a, an adapter. Uh, the MK3 adapter and uh, that has USB on the other side that you can plug into your laptop. And that is, uh, we use that to do the initial configuration, set everything up that we need, and then we don't need to use it again after a while. But uh, so essentially there are three ways that you connect and communicate with this. Uh, I guess a fourth is that you can get a separate control panel, which is handy for really simple installations of where you get to a site and there's a limit as to how much shore power you can draw. You can set that in the control panel. So I guess four ways that you can uh, connect to this and work with it. Right. The MultiPlus, one of the things that I really like about this MultiPlus is how smart it is. It's it's actually quite a remarkable bit of kit in that when you connect it to grid power, shore power, and turn it on, it analyzes the sine wave uh, coming from your grid and it matches its sine wave with that so that you don't get sparks, etc. And uh, in that way, it is able to supplement the power coming from shore power with, uh, by taking some out of your battery. So let's say you need to use just a little bit more than two kilowatts. For example, you have a fairly heavy duty kettle, a 2.3 kilowatt kettle, and uh, you want to use that kettle or it's, you've got a coffee machine that's quite, quite uh, thirsty. And what this will do is, uh, if your shore power um, has, let's say, six amps, and uh, it's not quite enough to feed everything that you need for your big kettle, uh, what this can do is it can say, right, I'm going to provide, I'm going to take from the shore power, whatever the shore power is producing, and uh, I'm going to supplement it with power that I'm going to draw out of the battery. So I'm going to invert that uh, and feed it into the, you know, into your, your 230 volt wires. Uh, the appliance doesn't know that it's getting some power from the battery and some from the grid. All it knows is it's getting pure sine wave power anyway from everything and uh, whilst you're using the appliance this is drawing from the battery 
and from the grid. And when you've finished boiling the kettle or whatever the case is, uh, it goes back to saying, okay, you only need a few uh, amps of power now, so I'm going to carry on charging the battery automatically. So no need for changeover switches and things like that. So very handy in that you plug this in and uh, it just works. It, it has a very low standby, so roughly uh, an amp, it draws an amp, um, but you can configure this to um, go into two modes where it, it's saving more power. And uh, so if it's running one amp on standby, you obviously using 24 amp hours in a day, but you can put it into uh, what they call AES search mode. And that will mean that you're, you're drawing roughly four to five amp hours a day for this thing to be on standby waiting to see if something actually needs it to provide the power. So uh, in, in uh, on our, our board here behind, this is the board that we take to shows, uh, just to show everybody how everything ties up together. Uh, we've put it quite a surprising number of installs almost exactly like this, even into uh, like a Ford Ranger uh, is about the smallest vehicle that we put a full install like this into. Um, and in that case, we went for a three kilowatt inverter. That's a three kilowatt inverter. Uh, able and the charge part of it is able to charge at 120 amps so very very high charge uh, quite a lot bigger than this one here as you can see but uh, that's really the bee's knees a three kilowatt inverter but I would say for most motorhomes and vans uh, this one here is the sweet spot two kilowatts how often do you need more than two kilowatts my coffee machine runs at about 1.2 kilowatts um, I have a mini oven that runs about 600 watts. Uh, we have a um, air fryer that runs at about 90 watts uh, or 90 amps rather. So uh, this is this is the sweet spot that can uh, cope with all of that. Uh, you get a smaller one than this, you get a 1600, uh, but this is really a nice sweet spot. Uh, and uh, so is it worth paying the extra 50-ish, 50, 60-ish pounds for this versus this. I think, as I said, I, I think in terms of the time that it takes to actually do the install, if you're paying somebody to do the install, you might make up the difference quite quickly because this is a bit easier and quicker to install. But the functionality you get out of this is absolutely great. And if you already have the Victron gear, especially if you're thinking of getting a Serbo GX and stuff like that, uh, this thing is absolute bee's knees. I, I really would go for it. So in my opinion, is the uh, if you're going to buy this versus this, if it was a choice for me, absolutely no doubt I would go for the MultiPlus uh, because everything that it can do, as I said, uh, charges at a higher rate, can supplement the electricity from your shore power, is a seamless changeover, if you like, uh, using uh, shore power versus battery and uh, is just a really, really nice bit of kit. Uh, very robust and uh, is not that big compared to a, an inverter, pure inverter, and really does the job well. So that's my opinion on it, but I'd, I'd really appreciate to see what you think in the comments. So hopefully you found that uh, useful, a bit of a comparison between the two, and ho hope that helps you to make your decision as to whether you're going to go for a MultiPlus or separate components. And um, as always, we'll uh, include links down below for all of these devices if you want to go and read a bit more about them. Uh, and uh, there's also a link to our mailing list. We uh, try not to spam. We try and send interesting, informative emails. Uh, there are never salesy emails. Uh, we're trying to just provide you with info that might be uh, useful. So uh, click on, on the button there and subscribe to our mailing list.